Hello and welcome back to another YouTube unboxing. Today we will be unboxing the Richard Mille RM11 FM Marcus Limited Edition. may notice that the watch is in its small travel pouch. We do have the big box on its way and we can show you one of the big boxes in the next videos. So here it is in this lovely smooth case. Let's get it out and have a look in all its glory. There we go. The RM11 FM Marcus edition. The RM11 was first launched in 2007. This is one of Mille's most iconic pieces. For lovers of the brand, it is instantly recognizable, much like the Submariner or the Speedmaster. The FM element stands for Felipe Massa, Brazilian racing driver who started every Grand Prix with a Mille on his wrist since 2004. His collection must be incredible. He's an 11 time Grand Prix winner and Richard Mille's longest partner who has been responsible for test driving a number of their horological innovations. Today though, we're having a look at not only Richard Mille and Felipe Massa, but Richard Mille and Marcus McGill's. As with this piece, we have a confluence of influence. This is the time where I have to throw my hands up and say, although I know a fair bit about watches, I made a very grave mistake and one that retrospectively gives me the cringe. I'm an amateur. Double signed watches are not a new thing. In fact, they've enjoyed a resurgence of late thanks to Patek Philippe releasing a Tiffany Nautilus that has just gone absolutely bonkers. Trusted retailers teaming with brands is a practice that gained popularity in the mid 20th century. Tiffany isn't the only company who has partnered with high-end watchmakers. They've sold their wares to Asprey, Bayer, Boucherer and Serpico, just to name a few. So, on to my mistake, which was to assume that the RM11 FM Marcus Limited Edition was Richard Meal producing a watch for a retailer that I hadn't heard of, and thinking that it was probably a store in the USA similar to Tiffany or Bloomingdale's. So I was wrong, oops. Although Marcus Margiels is a retailer, he is so much more than that. His father, Alexander Margiels, came to the UK from Poland in 1931 and created Elko, a watch company which imported, sold and repaired Swiss watches. By 1939, they became the biggest distributor in the UK. And during World War II, Elko switched their attention from watches to manufacturing cockpit instruments for Spitfires and anti-aircraft guns to help the war effort. Marcus was the eldest of Alexander's children and he was born in Bletchley, home of the Codebreakers in 1942. Post-war, Elko expanded its distribution to include Russian mechanical watches and they changed their name to Time Products. Now in 1963, Marcus Margiels joined his father's company and not being one for sitting still, he decided to invent a brand in 1966. That brand was Seconda, which he created by rebadging the Russian watches that Time Products were already distributing and marketing with the catchphrase beware of expensive imitations. Given that Seconda is still a household name to this day, it was and still is a roaring success. In the 1970s, Time Products helped the venerable Audemars Piguet nail in North American, European and Swiss distribution. They formed a relationship that was to become lifelong. In the 80s, they took over global distribution of some of the heavy hitting Swiss brands such as Vacheron, Blancpain, Girard Perigou, Breguet and Piaget. Apologies for butchering the pronunciations of any of those. I did my best. So they grew those brands long before they were bought out by luxury conglomerates like LVMH and Richmond. In 1991, Alexander passed away and Marcus had the keys to the empire. So in 2000, he took over the distribution of Hublot and in doing so became a close friend of Jean-Claude Beaver, who said of him, the mistake many people make about Marcus is that they treat him like a normal person. And Beaver was right. 
Marcus was at the ground floor of mechanical and luxury watches before they became hot. He is the man who sold his Audemars Piguet collection back to AP for their museum in Le Brassus. Can you imagine what that collection looked like? How legendary is that? He was Marcus of Bond Street, a glass palace of ultra luxury timepieces, which was and still is considered the most important collection of watches in the world. Although it now resides in Mayfair since the Bond Street store closed in 2017. From Seconda to the creme de la creme of haute horology, Marcus is the Don of watches. Given his status, it therefore comes as no surprise that Richard Mille created an RM11 edition for Marcus, and he said of him, When we first met, I showed him my RM001 tourbillon, and he just sat there for about two minutes, totally silent. He then said finally that since then, our partnership has been very successful. I have always found Marcus to be a great person with passion for what he does, totally professional and above all, a friend. I love working with him. What an amazing review from Richard Mille himself. Upon hearing that, I wasn't sure which of the two parties gets the win. Richard Mille for being declared fantastic by Marcus or Marcus being showered with limited editions by the man himself. It's a bit of a 50-50 split on the winning front, but this leads me right into saying that the RM11 Marcus edition is a real winner on the wrist. So let's get to it. The watch has a 45 millimeter case, but it's 49 millimeter lug to lug. It's 16 millimeters tall, but the tonu shape with the curved rear ensures that it sits really well on the wrist while the grade five titanium case makes it light and super comfortable. This is one of those watches that sounds like a beast on paper, but in reality, it can be worn by those with slimmer wrists without looking out of place. This is largely down to the compact length. It also has a lack of protruding lugs and the rubber strap arching down and hugging the wrist. It's ergonomically brilliant. The case follows typical RM sandwich architecture. Simplified, it consists of a top plate, a middle case and a back plate bolted together with the brand's trademark five point spline screws. These have become a feature of the design as per AP's Royal Oak. And as you can see, all 12 of them adorning the front of the watch. But if you switch to the side profile, you can also see the sleeves pronounced on the side of the case, which is much more pleasing to the eye than a smooth slab side. Particularly on a watch of this depth, don't be fooled though. This is not a simple three-part case. It's incredibly well-engineered, hand-finished and hand-assembled. Richard Mille's casework is an exercise in absolute precision, and it shows. The crown and pushers follow a Formula One, Massa, inspired theme, with the crown mimicking a tire's rubber on the outside and spokes on the inside. And the chronograph pushers styled to look like brake and gas pedals. The dial of the RM11 is where the engineering really shines. It is superbly skeletonized, and in typical RM fashion, it features a double sapphire face. One is protecting the watch overall, and another much thinner slice sitting above the open worked movement. It's printed with Arabic numerals, chronograph registers, model, and date frame. There is also a third plate of sapphire to the rear of the watch, which gives you a full three-dimensional view of suspended movement and what a spectacle that is. Powering the watch is RM's caliber RMAC1, which is a 60 dual automatic movement with 50 hour power reserve, variable geometry rotor, flyback chronograph, annual calendar, and an oversized date. So, what is it that makes this Marcus Limited Edition so special? In short, red is the Marcus colour, so the hands, numerals, accents are all homage to the man himself. This also has a DLC coated titanium case which darkens the watch down to make the contrast really striking. It's really an absolute hybrid of RM, Felipe Massa and Marcus, all in such an incredibly rare beast. 
As I mentioned earlier in the video, there are only 12 of these in existence. And interestingly enough, when you're talking about RMs of that limited production, you'd probably be expecting me to say that this is north of 500,000, but it's actually 210K. So if you want this gorgeous lump of multiple icons on your wrist, then you know who to call. Thank you for joining us again on another YouTube video. Guys, please do subscribe to the channel and I will keep these coming.